my name is Luis Moreno Matias, and I'm PhD on machine learning, and I'm head of data science at Credit Tech. So, at Credit Tech, we leverage on a very strong binding between traditional data sources, alternative data sources, and proprietary machine learning technology that allow us to underwrite millions of customers uh, all around the globe. Yeah, sure. So nowadays, traditional banking still relies a lot on manual labor, such as risk experts, to underwrite uh, loan applications. Okay, so the thing is that is very limitative because then banks limit their customer segments to so-called prime customers. So customers that have a steady income, a very pr probably fat pay slip and almost no debt, okay? And so this excludes a very large uh, side of the population which comes underserved uh, as potential uh, credit earners. So data can change that, okay? So the main, the main idea is that with the binding between data and machine learning technology, you can actually underwrite at scale. And for banks, that will mean reduce costs, manual label, but also uh, enlarge their uh, customer segments and overcome like other business barriers such as geographical barriers um, and also and also um, business ones. Whew, that's a tricky question. That's a tricky question. So the thing is nowadays artificial intelligence I'm afraid that doesn't still live to what we are our expectations of artificial intelligence. It will be a human level artificial intelligence. So what we have right now are computer programs, algorithms that are designed to solve very specific tasks such as distinguish a person from a motorcycle or a cat from a dog. Okay? So many different stakeholders in the banking industry may look to artificial intelligence, consequent value propositions at different levels. Uh, but for sure there are there are two three key areas where I see that that has an immediate impact. Uh, credit loan underwriting is clearly one of them. Um, also text processing, so digitalization of documents and then automatically tagging and extracting information of documents, that is typically called natural language processing, but also others like uh, uh, automatization of call centers and, and, and other areas within banking uh, industry. Yeah. Oh, okay. We do have a large spectrum of applications uh, of artificial intelligence methods and proprietary machine learning technology that we develop in-house in all our uh, business cycle. So perhaps the most prominent one is, of course, credit underwriting, that's the expected one, but also, for instance, on call centers to give, for instance, an estimation of uh, waiting time for the customers, but also it, in identifying specific non-traditional customer segments where we can somehow personalize more our, um, our marketing, okay, towards attracting that specific, like, sub-segments of customers. Customer loyalty, that's also a very, very interesting question. So typically banks offer very wide range of services. That goes from traditional banking, so getting deposits, issuing uh, loans, uh, mortgages, so buy houses, but also consumer loans or smaller items such as purchase a car, but also other services such as a credit card, issue a credit card, or even for some type of insurances. So when you talk about customer loyalty, this will be very related to the customer profitability and something that we call customer lifetime, lifetime value. Okay? So we have to understand that what typically attracts a customer, the type of offer that attracts a customer to come to a bank in the first place, is not an offer that is, will be profitable to a bank. Okay? Then the bank always expects go on the long run. I'll give an example, so such as these banks that convince you to open an uh, account, a savings account or a checking account when you are still a student in university, okay, 
they will not they will lose money with you okay because probably will not have income and they have expenses still with you but then 10 years later you will go to that bank to ask for a mortgage for your house and that's what profit comes for same thing with credit card okay they offer credit card for free but sooner or later you use it to do a purchase where you'll pay 20 installments with a very large interest rate so the key for banks to leverage on big data to increase this customer lifetime value is personalization. Be able to make the right type of offer at the right time, either to grab the customer or later on to make real profit out of it. And then, for instance, we at Credit Tech also try to do that, okay? So even not only making the traditional decision of issuing a loan or not, but personalizing the offer, such as we mitigate our risk, but at the same time give something that the customer will say, hey, okay, I'm, I'm ready to repay this, I'm ready to repay at that price, okay? Yeah, so, so machine learning goes as almost a history of 50 years of existence. Okay, so that question is very pertinent because many of the most popular algorithms even now that are breaking out nowadays have like 20, 30 years of history. However, there are two things that make the whole story change, especially in the last decade. One is the amount of digital data available and another is the amount of computational power that comes available at an affordable price. Okay, and I, I, I can give you like two examples to illustrate how this is happening. So for sure you already saw many American movies from the last 20, 30 years, and many of them happen in New York City. And you have all these images from these movies 20 years ago of all these people in the subways reading a newspaper, the physical newspaper, the huge newspaper they are, you see, hanging here. If you see a movie that is passing now, they will do that, but with a smartphone like this one, okay? So the data that these people are generating just for the clicks they are doing over the, the, the newspaper, the navigation, their geolocation, all this digital data that we as humans are, 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 are creating with our what's called well, our digital fingerprint, that is a fool for these algorithms, right? That happens at scale and that we collected almost effortless, okay? So due to the technology that we have nowadays. In terms of computational power, it's cloud computing that is changing the game with all these big providers that exist that the provide that pay as you go type of schema, scale as much as you want, so you don't need to be a bigger big organization to have inexpensive uh, uh, computational power that allow you to leverage on data from your customers to automate some of your processes. And voila, every business lane, probably half of the stands that you see here will mention something about AI and data science. That's the air that we live on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's okay. That's that, that's a question that you a debate, not a question that you see a lot nowadays. And I, unlike perhaps many of my colleagues, I'll tell it's a hype. Okay, that's a bit polemic uh, statement, uh, and it's a hype because although we did had breakthroughs, a lot of breakthroughs that were made by. A series of technologies that belong to that categorization, um, the expectations that we are generating are like three, five, ten times more what we can deliver now. Okay, so definitely I say it's a hype. So we see progress in big, a lot of progress to areas such as computer vision that is very important on automotive, automotive industry or also natural language processing that's very important, also for information retrieval, searching, okay? So, but for instance, traditional, uh, more traditional areas such as st stock market forecasting or even uh, credit risk uh, scoring, so still leave uh, of, of algorithms that are not deep learning, okay, and they don't need to be deep learning, and they don't need the costs associated with the infrastructure that you need to, to run deep learning. And I would say that perhaps more than half of the companies nowadays, globally, that are using machine learning 
for something on their business, not they are doing, they have a team that are doing something, that are using that in production, either to take actions or to take recommendations for their business, are not using deep learning, okay? And to, tomorrow in my presentation, I'll talk a little about how this hype came from, why it came from, why it's interesting to promote or to whom it's interesting to promote it, and what is uh, really happening, okay?